thank you. Welcome back, everybody. Um, the, uh, the session this afternoon is um, the first session this afternoon is urban borders, mediations, and new social actors. Um, those of you familiar with the LSE will know that I am not Tony Hall. Um, he's slightly greyer, um, but not by much. Um, Unfortunately, Tony can't be with us uh, this afternoon. Fortunately, um, the reason is that he's become a grandfather um, and his uh, daughter has just given birth to a baby boy. So uh, we wish them all the best. Um, which does give me an added role in life as well um, to chair, um, I think, three exciting speakers um, who I will try and um, time manage in a culturally appropriate way with yellow and red cards um, you can judge the success at about 3.25. If we're still here and still talking, um, I'll have failed. Um, the first uh, speaker, I'll introduce each one in turn before they come up uh, and give their presentation. Oh, we need to do the video, sorry. Let me do the video first. É o que a gente está vivendo aqui. Você está aqui hoje numa favela e ali é Ipanema. E o asfalto era justamente as pessoas que a gente criticava. Eram os playboys, era o sistema. Isso ainda tem que mudar. A gente tem que incomodar todo mundo. Quem mora aqui, quem mora ali. O sonho da revolução continua porque a favela não mudou. Okay, so the, the first speaker uh, for this afternoon's event is, uh, is Junior Santa Rosa, uh, who is uh, Director of, uh, the, of Housing at the National Secretariat of Housing in the Ministry of Cities, the Federal Government of Brazil. Um, this is the department which is involved and directs um, one of the world's largest housing programs and is intimately involved in how Brazilian cities are managed and changing their face. Uh, in the 21st century. So without uh, further ado, I will pass over to, to Junior. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Sandra for the invitation and to congratulate the LSC and the team that has uh, supported this uh, project, Banco Itaú, and the colleagues from UFA and from uh, AfroHeg and, and the various other institutions. Uh, we're thankful that we can have this opportunity as a government, a government that, uh, that has the mandate uh, to work with uh, the systems in the cities and work with group, population groups so, which over uh, hundreds of years have not had the, the right uh, or, um, to uh, worthy or dignified uh, uh, dwellings. <clears throat> and these are points that uh, uh, attract our attention as a government team. I uh, work with uh, uh, my colleague here from the government and various others. And uh, I feel sure that a large part of this work that uh, Sandra and her team is involved in the research uh, and has brought to us is this new view, this new vision of uh, innovation. This theme of innovation is being used in the country uh, in, very, in a very diversified way. It, it could mean very superficial things which do not uh, convey to the uh, public the, the possibility of scale which is a big theme for us in Brazil. But I believe that it's not just a theme a theme for Brazil, it's a theme for Latin America and for developing countries, which we talk about the South-South cooperation. This debate, which will be, uh, is and what will be of the, uh, the cities uh, in developing countries, puts a spotlight on work such as this um, that has been developed which I would hope would continue to be developed, such as uh, these admirable teams such as this one with, that uh, presented the results of their research on sociability. Why do I mention this? Because the federal government itself 
when we um, develop a program on a large scale for urbanization of the um, favelas, which is called technically the, the um, urbanization of uh, precarious uh, settlements, this, uh, uh, this is very interesting that uh, Sandra talks about this. In our times, we, we assume responsibility for these, the favelas uh, uh, in 2003. The, the, the favelas were not even on the maps. The, the maps, in, obviously, with the, the exception of Rio, because in Brazil, we look at Brazil by means of Rio. But as you know, we have uh, 5 million, uh, 5,000, uh, more than 5,000 um, municipalities. And they don't want to identify the uh, urban areas. It was shown as uh, green areas. They're areas that, uh, because of the absence of, of um, policies, the population, uh, the low-income people, they had to, they had to occupy these areas. And the theme is not just a theme of the concept, but of also an acknowledgement of, of Brazilian society, and especially, I think, of the courage of the Brazilian government to say that we have to create uh, policies that, uh, that are capable of in turning these uh, around, because the situation uh, after the constitution of 1988 uh, um, these uh, societies have been giving um, results in, the term, in terms of institution, institutions. And, but in terms of urbanization, we, we are crawling. We're dragging our feet because of the bureaucracy. And I also want to say, with regards to the preconceived ideas, we need to, we need to see these communities as partners. And, and we also need to we know that a large part of these uh, areas, the first contact is related to the, to the aspect of the violence aspect. We, in the case of public policies, whether it's uh, to do with infrastructure or social infra policies, and with us that, that look after uh, housing, they tend to be, uh, they manage resources in a, and we don't see any similar parameters in the world. And because of this, it's, uh, it's important for us to see these studies. Because even in a very specific territory, which is Rio, uh, there is no doubt that it has opened up to us a discussion that we have been engaged in within the scope of the government, uh, which is how to allocate the resources that we have, which we call um, a, a social work or social scope. So as to, uh, so that the, because the, how can we, we, we're still very conservative in this. And this is not just my reflection. Our work colleagues and the, um, the city councils and uh, the, these agencies that help us to operate these policies uh, help us to be aware of how much we need to move forward. Uh, as was mentioned by many others that uh, spoke before me. We need, in fact, for the conditions for these experiences today, which are points of references we talk about, uh, we have a, a very diverse uh, situation in our country. And how can experiences such as Atayi, Jifejian, and uh, the, the Kufa, Alpha Hega, and the, 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 the favelas. How can we use this as positive references and, and in terms of scale? Because we have this image uh, that, uh, of a Brazilian who is doing a marvelous work here in, in Brazil, uh, in, in the UK, uh, which is Baroni, and she works with the, uh, the, um, uh, the prison system here. And, and they can use this as a... As a we need to put up here a theme to 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 to, to highlight this, to to emphasize this to society. As Junior mentioned, we have to accommodate. We have to show the conditions. And below this, when the this uh, hourglass uh, uh, becomes narrow, we need to enlarge it and make it more evident. It goes beyond what is expected. Uh, this is. And I believe that it's the same problem that we have a, a, a cooperation dialogue with Africa and India and Asian countries. How can we take this discussion, this debate, from the point of view in terms of methodology? Everybody spoke here about an, a, an important experience, but, 
but what Sandra and all her team that have worked with us, uh, they, they have uh, um, revealed or opened this up to us. What can we do to uh, uh, create awareness? Be, uh, there, there might be there might be other issues that affect this, which is uh, corruption. This is our sin, uh, our scenario. We have to deal with this. We have to t um, take the bull by the horns. This uh, idea of complaining, it's, it's not possible. It's this type of, uh, uh, this can't be the way for us to go forward. The result of this uh, research mo shows this. So even though we have these talents and, uh, and these, uh, uh, to develop strategies, any methodology that allows the Brazilian citizen or the thing that we are looking at here, the transfer, the, the policy of transfer, to give them uh, uh, the means for survival so that they don't depend on the state directly. I cannot ignore the, the fact that these, um, th this population have rights. I, I as a public uh, service officer, uh, must recognize this. and. And we, and we recognize the activities that have been done by these organizations in their quality, in their, and their uh, reach, and their innovativeness. But they must be capable of developing their, the identification with these strategies. And also on the part of the researchers and these institutions, we need to see within the public uh, partnership a partnership with the public sector, which is not very easy. It's the same that I say to the private sector. The, the, the important things which I'm going to mention very quickly here, I, uh, I have no intention with this presentation to, to show the details, but, uh, but the, uh, these are important partners for us, and we, we are reviewing the parameters of our policy, our social policy, coupled with the, the uh, urban development, so, so that you can have an idea. We have three billion reais uh, to to have um, a social policy uh, linked to this. When, and this is a question that, uh, where, where is this money going to? It's a question that is being asked. Uh, how can we, um, in a positive way, uh, bring these uh, strategies to uh, that has been studied? Because we are very far from identifying uh, when, when, when when we're going to do some work in the in the territory or in some particular place, the social movement that exists there, we 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 work in terms of the the collective situation, and we need to look at the the youths. Um, uh, uh, no import. It doesn't matter what color, whether they're black, white, or yellow. Um, we have the we have the various level of social levels. Every individual is a is a living person, and rights, and and he needs a social inclusion, and it, and we we want um, education to reach the levels that we desire to achieve, but but if we're going to expect that this is going to happen and to be uh, uh, recognized, uh, as was mentioned by Sandra. The, the acknowledgement is there by this by the state, but how can we bring this experience uh, to a, a good um, to fru uh, fruition, a good reference? I would say that it, it, this is our big challenge. So here you have an idea. We have what is called an approach uh, for social housing, and this is. Uh, the, the territory that we're referring to is uh, the smallest area of intervention when it deals with um, uh, sanitation, paving, re paving of roads, and other amenities, access to e e service equipments. You, you place uh, groups of engineers and, and social workers to start working with that population. And the question for us is, uh, although we have uh, guidelines, uh, the participation of of those involved, the, the methodologies uh, are, are not coping with this. They're, they're, they're outdated, they're worn. To, to deal with the diversity and for the size of the potentials that we're uh, dealing with. So once again, uh, and more so, this uh, we need to have more of this research. 
and one of the colleagues here men made a question uh, the, 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 with a view to incorporating these so that we can have more we, we have to de deal with this uh, diversity. So it's not just uh, incorporating this methodology, but what is the capacity to interact here with all of this reality? This is possible. This is possible f for us to create the policy from the federal level and to deal with this uh, diversity of complexity. We can have policy that is um, legal and to, to deal with the diversity in our country. We, we definitely believe in this. So we have uh, various we have the point from with which we work, which uh, the main moments at which we can. Um, uh, we call this the uh, diagnostic of the ter of the territory and its needs. When we're talking about works, we're talking about this. We're talking about uh, dealing with uh, uh, the complexity of the uh, favela alemão, which is the. Ju we have. We need to have equipment that. The, which uh, up until now did not come to this space. And we, if it got there, it was very uh, ineffectual. But uh, because of the size of these equipment, uh, this public equipment, these public facilities, and because of the necessity, we're talking about a, 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 a favela complex, which is a 12 uh, facilities. There's Jacarezia Mare. There's a, a large group, if we look at the whole region, where it is, and um, and uh, very markedly, this uh, program is being introduced. We have this uh, urbanization of the favelas, which uh, uh, and uh, up to sixty billion of uh, 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 thirty billion dollars is being allocated for this. If you, it's a lot of resources, if you compare it with other countries, we can show this. When we talk about Angola, Mozambique, uh, South Africa, Cape Verde, and uh, in fact, in the the group of countries. It is necessary for us to uh, put to allocate um, resources to meet these needs, uh, but not, we can't just talk about it. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to move forward with the advances. This is the first stage. I think this is uh, it's a rescuing the, the the rights of the the citizens that live there, and uh, we need to understand that these. Um, these uh, territories uh, de, um, contend or contest or compete for resources with the rest of the city. And very often we talk about the uh, this, this, this part of the city, they're working, uh, all of the doormen, all of the, the secretaries, and we, we live with this city. But we understand uh, Symbolically, what is this city that is, is separate? I understand what Sandra has allowed us to see is that, uh, in addition to the statistics and the numbers and the economic activity, the theme of understanding these uh, these people, their individuality, these bearers uh, of innovation, uh, and these people who live in situations extremely violent in terms of the social aspects and psychologically. How can we transform this into sociability? In how can we, by means of uh, interventions such as this, bring, which is uh, uh, obligatory in, in the uh, social approach, how can we value this approach, uh, the subjective approach? This is a new thing. If you if you talk about uh, subjectivity, you talk about this to engineers who are there or the contractors that are there doing this work. They're the people that are going there. They're the people that deal with these uh, this population. And so we this is this is being done in a very competitive form. And so we have here an opportunity and we we also have another aspect the 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 power of the private sector to build these buildings the private sector in, in our country with the urban policy we talk about we uh, I had a meeting with the uh, architectural association of london here and such as richard uh, roger Rod, uh, norman foster and others uh, the people uh, who work today in in 
de developments in Arab countries and so on. All of these are interested in a cooperation project because they would like to work the cooperation from uh, with the point of view of improving the design and our delivery of the urban services because what we produce in our cities today by means of our programs such as My Life, My Home, um, we can see here the uh, housing units that are um, built in the favela Alemão. Many of these can uh, uh, advance uh, architecturally. We can do this today because what we've done in the country and uh, many families that are who recognize this uh, right to good housing and and, and this could be much better. And these are, are, are the research such as uh, what we've just seen uh, that has been done with the colleagues here at the LSE are extremely important to show that in other areas we need to be daring and we can uh, take a different view and improve the dynamics of these informal spaces, which we call about favelas in Africa. They have another name. In India, there's a different name. We have so many uh, diversity, cultural diversity, but we, we must be capable of, uh, of facing up to this. Uh, this is fundamental in our partnership, but there are still a lot of prejudices in our area. We need to rise above these. We need we we need to have a, a relationship with the private sector because there's, there's talk of um, corruption and all of that. This is paralyzing. We need to separate these issues and to take the bull by the horns and, and put everybody in. I think the example, very clear example that was mentioned here, spoke about risks. You talk about risk, but I don't understand. You can't, you can't do it without running any risks. So... I think that the main, the main points that we see here is that we are looking for, which we're finding out in this research, is the innovations, it's exactly that. So how can I put uh, an emphasis on methodology at a scale within these characteristics and these values? that the research had presented to us, meaning lead, dealing with subjectivity is very important when we deal with uh, certain areas with uh, violence. And how can I put this in a, in a scale of public policy? This is our discussion. So we have to only thank the opportunity. Brazil is much more than real. Uh, but obviously, Rio de Janeiro today means to us, for the federal government in Brazil, a platform of these uh, apprenticeships and these references. Oh, of course, because you're going to have the Olympic Games that will open opportunities for this debate. We have to be able to discuss the relocations. We have a law about the relocations, which is very not innovative. No country has ever done something like it. Uh, there'll be it's a very complex law, but we'll be able to put this discussion in an agenda. We have a uh, Raquel Niki for the. Uh, United Nations, she's reminding us of the commitment that Brazil has. Roger is going to speak about this as well. So we're going to face these partnerships in a different way, without the prejudice, because without scale, without public power, without us complying with our role with populations and cities that have no rights, and without public power, it will be very difficult. So Brazil has 60% of its municipalities uh, with no public service, basic public service. To think about the NGOs and the market will deal with this is absurd, because that's not their role. It's the government's role, uh, and it's a commitment that we have re uh, repeating since Lula became president, and now with President Dilma. Thank you, uh, 
Junior. Uh, our next speaker is, is Celso Taiji, uh, who is, uh, was co-founder of KUFA, uh, the Central Union of Favela, that I think um, we've heard about uh, a little of this morning. Uh, it's an institution which works through and with uh, young people uh, in favela and other communities and is working now in about 15 countries uh, around the world. Celso uh, grew up in favela in Rio. Uh, he also grew up uh, on the street and in public institutions. Uh, he's uh, self-educated, um, but is also an author, has written a number of books, uh, including, I'm told, um, a book on the handbook of basketball players. Um, as well as launching um, in 1994 um, the first magazine in Brazil of black music, in Rio, I'm sorry, of black music. Um, his uh, NGO career, as well as the basketball sideline, um, has both taken off, uh, and the, he uh, is the creator of the International Basketball League uh, for Street Basketball, uh, which exists across 12 countries as well as 27 states. Uh, in Brazil. So we welcome uh, Celso to the microphone. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Well, in Brazil, I went beyond 15 minutes. I was in a favela in Catagalo, and I could use more. Because I'm not in a favela, and our friend uh, uh, kept my passport, I'm going to say everything I have to say in 15 minutes. Well, in 15 minutes, I won't be able to say everything about Kufa, which is 15 years old and 10 uh, years of formal life. Brazil has 200 million inhabitants, and we are in 27 states. So there are very difficult, different governances in different areas. And to be able to speak about all this, we would need much longer time. So I'm going to make an option to speak about what we intend to do, because this research what we started to do next last year and this year. So I'm going to speak about this research. This research uh, led us to, to do a number of things and consolidate our uh, thinking in relation to what we are doing already. And as my, our friend Silvia Ramos, who is a great ref benchmark for us, when she talks about afro and Kufa, I think myself, ooh, are we all that? So uh, we systematize everything we do, and sometimes we ourselves don't see the importance of what we do because sometimes we do things by intuition or because we are the fruit of that environment. To speak about Kufa, I have to speak about myself. I'm Brazilian. I'm born in Baixada Fluminense, which is a very violent area in Rio, and my parents broke up uh, when I was seven years old, and they, my mother separated from my father, and I went to live on the streets, literally on the streets. And I lived on the streets until 14 years old. I lived just having this robbing, stealing. And then I went to live in a hostel with some people uh, that were suffering uh, from problems. And then I went to live in a favela. So. For many people, it's a very, very sad sign to go and live in a favela, but for me, it was a very, very good sign. I had very few opportunities of education. Well, not even opportunities because uh, the state was present. I didn't have any interest in studying because there was no motivation and study and go to university and speak language. It wasn't a subject that was uh, recurrent in, uh, in, in the space with which I uh, lived. So I like to smoke a spliff. Yes, that's what we do. It used to do daily. And uh, we did that quite well. <laughs> and you too. <laughs> Although it's another universe, you do it too. So the time 
past, but I managed to develop from the relations that I had with uh, uh, tra uh, traffic de uh, uh, drug dealers. Uh, Rogero is a guy who lived there where I used to live, and he taught me and to write and to speak, and he. He made me read uh, a book of Tolstoy, a War and Peace, and of course I couldn't read at that time until today. I don't think I would manage to read that. So we 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 did a few things, and I started uh, working with Happy in Brazil, and then was more aware of what I represented and what I was, and the possibilities that I had to reach other objectives, and I started to systemize systematize what I was doing and I had never thought about before. And so we decided to create an organization from hip hop, which, to, which it was to take culture to the favela. And of course, we had no culture. We are a band of chaotic people preaching revolution. So automatically, we produced our ignorance, but I thought we were being revolutionaries. I could say, could talk about this for hours about the universe that uh, of that universe of that time. Today, there are many contradictions. Today, we live in a in a country which is a sixth uh, financial economy of the world. And today, the favela is not only a physical space where people where poor people live, but it's a, there are social classes in the favela of people who, although they use the opportunity that they, they have, they, they did not migrate uh, away from the favela. So there are people of many different social classes in the favela. But it's, a favela is a space where there's a lot of things lacking. So there's no investment made in favela. But the fact is that uh, KUFA exists, it's one of the institutions that tries to improve life of people in uh, the favela. I would like, I don't know how much, how long I have, but because I know I have, haven't got much, much time. We started doing all sorts of actions. Uh, in the cultural, social area. Last year, for instance, we received a prize called Darcy Ribeiro, which is offered by the Chamber of Deputies in Brazil, and it's given to institutions in the area of education. So CUFA received prizes in uh, because of the, the number of youth uh, that we educated, not only in Rio, but in all the country but also in the area of human rights. So people who, who work in Kufa has not much notion of where they are involved, but we recognize the people under different focuses, and it's here that we start reflecting about what we are doing and have an awareness. So we use the opportunities that, that turn up in our lives, and we go ahead. So when Erlanger asks what kind of impact, negative impact, uh, can exist in our relations with the formal state and government, for instance, some time ago, we were always just uh, getting very cross with the government, uh, mayor, secretaries in general. And, but then we thought about the resources that all this government have. They're not their resources. If I have a condition, if I don't have, uh, if I don't have any reach to these resources, then I could have just a badge from a favela, and that's it. But these are, if these resources is part for all of us, I can't think that the physical space where I work is a, it can be like idle spaces. We want better physical spaces because I pay taxes as much as other people. And when I buy a shirt or a pair of shoes, I also pay taxes. And uh, the risk exists because we know politicians, uh, and, uh, they have our interests, 
And if we use this institution, which is in 27 states, there's always a, a politician, there's some policy, the, the, the people change. We are not genius. We, we know that uh, what they have to, to gain if they work with us. And we know what we gain as well when, we have, uh, when we're popular and when we increase our, um, our, our actions. I can't say exactly what our future is, what our future is, but we we'll go on working and we think uh, we'll work on things that we think are good and, and we will not work on things that are not so good. And we'll go surviving with our conflicts, our daily conflicts, because this question is something that we have to live through every single day. And uh, when we grew, of course, uh, we became quite uh, important, but uh, well, how, how long do I have? Five minutes? I so I separated here. I'm going to speak one minute from each item of a project that we're doing this year that we already started and what we're going to do until 31st of December, which is there are projects are part of uh, many things, and they're not projects that the research, there are projects that the research here used. And I'd like to thank, thanks uh, Sandra here, because the first time that I speak in public, <laughs> so I, I cease being a virgin of uh, public speaking. So what has Kufa been doing? From 12th to the 13th of this month, we will launch in Sao Paulo Data Kufa, which is uh, linked to Data Popular in Brazil. There's some ministers, ministers will be present. Bernardes will be present as well. He already said so. Favela, as we say, when our friend says that we are full of um, full of marras, full of uh, complications, full of, because even if you have good uh, goodwill, you always saw us like uh, like mice, and you saw us as scientists look at uh, mice in a laboratory. But now we're going to to be doing research because part of the research are some research is comp some research on research is not well because we don't allow people uh, to come in the favelas to actually under care, uh, carry uh, research. So Kufa now has been doing research. There are 102 young people making courses about um, the use of content. Um, qualitative research, and the technical part would be data popular. And we are creating a questionnaire to be applied in, in this research. We talk about class CDR, and the, so there are products that have to, to be bought. That means we don't manage what we could produce. So this is an action that we are carrying out from uh, the moment I became part of your research. This is LACI, it's a, it's an organization of uh, entrepreneurs with 150, 180 favelas. So to know how do we relate, but this is in Rio only. So 150 favelas from Rio in which we have representatives. So if you have a community leadership that has, makes a party for 3,000 people, so people who work uh, and we, we gather to be able to speak about businesses. There's an institute called Don Cabral to train these people, and there's another university in partnership with us, and there are also there's banks and other companies discussing about how can they make their entry in these favelas. But we do not want only to buy products for the favelas. 
but we want to give opportunity and have development. When we think about Kufa, we think about development. If people developed, the happiness comes automatically. And how do we share this and not only see mice and those who buy the services that companies offer, but we want to be part of this management because they have money, yes, but we have, uh, between brackets, the favela. When Silvia Ramos spoke about uh, the life insurance, we launched in six states and in Rio. So I'm going to invite on Thursday. We made a film called Falcão, Meninos do Tráfico. And it was seen by 100 million people, and it received prizes in many awards in many countries, even here, even here in Spain, nearby in Spain. The king of Spain gave us a prize, but you know, we were terrified when we heard that he was away uh, killing animals with his lover. So we have. Um, So this insurance worries me, and the, we do not necessarily do things that we believe in or that we trust. Sometimes we do it, uh, but then we, we things don't go well. Can I translate this? No. <laughs> I thought I said that because I knew it wouldn't be translatable. I, we, we, we made a film, and we chose 17 young people who will conduct the film, and there are young people who are involved in criminality. And in two years of the 17, 17 people died, only one survived, and he survived because he went to jail. So I saw in the funeral of this young person, people got, gathered money to be able to, to, to bury him. And we know that usually when people die in the favela, bond, that's when the, the, the drug trafficking uh, starts growing because they want to do good. So when the crime relates to families in the moment of pain, grief, that's when things work out well, because they want to feed the process of dependency. And today, the militias in Rio are doing the same thing. And so we can see the, the attempts to create insurances, which cost 14, 15 reais per month for people who are poor. And uh, they're trying with Bradesco. Bradesco is trying with one favela, but it's not managing to get anywhere. So I went to speak to some companies, and they all thought it was very interesting. But the social part of the company would say that they had to relate to the commercial department. And then, then, then I just realized that I, um, the project wasn't wasn't too good, wasn't good, or the companies weren't understanding each other. So we made a project of uh, social marketing. No, I did a, I studied, I made a thesis on this, a social marketing, as I didn't. But this project, what was it? I created, my idea is to make a, have an insurance for two million people which is a quantity of people who live in favelas in Rio. Two million people for next year. Now, this is not sold, it's given. We gave today in seven favelas 300 some thousand insur insurances. And who, who charges? We made it for 50p for a very low value. And the comp it's the companies who pay the insurance. And this is a kind of a commercial gesture. So then when you go to renew the insurance, if you have the, coup the, the, the voucher, you can just uh, re redo it. And then they have a, the people want the insurance, the queue to acquire this insurance, and it costs 13 Thousand reais. 
It was very successful, but we don't want to go on doing this. And some parliamentarians, deputy senators, wanted to incorporate the project through uh, the parliament. They wanted to finance this insurance. Of course, if a politician want to do this, then they could buy one million insurance. They're going to pay six million reais, and they have funds of 14 million, and they would go and have one million of potential uh, electors. So to get away from this, I, I invited the Minister of uh, Social Activities. So I have a meeting on Thursday. I asked her to invite some of her colleagues, and from then on, we are doing this pilot uh, in seven states. And when this works, uh, then we don't. Then Kufa doesn't have to do it anymore. You are the ones who have to do it. If you think that this is healthy and that the favela deserves this. You can call me. The bridge. We are creating a company of a marketing business. I think marketing in terms of uh, so to have a view of the people from the favela from research, from the view of research. So those who have space or the people who publish things in newspapers and the favela does have no voice and, uh, well, people in, favela, in favelas are not uh, heard. We created now the top Kufa, which is a TV program, and, it will, and there's a program on Saturday to value the women in favelas. And uh, our ob central objective is to have a good agenda in the favelas to transform the stigma that has in this name. So, for instance, we have an event, a football event, and we involve 32,000 young people in a football field. Today, only or today only the young from favela that can uh, can play. And Kufa is saying that it's absurd that only favela children could participate. So while these young people couldn't go to school, they cannot participate to, to the sport because they can't even buy the shoes. When we organized ourselves and we wanted an, uh, this event, event, then the others said, no, we want to participate as well because otherwise you're discriminating against us. So this is already in court now, and if, it, if, it, if I don't win the case in court, then tough. So now we've, we're thinking, how can we create a great event so all the children of the favela have the opportunity to be seen? So we produced, uh, we do not want to open hand of what she represents at international level, this model. Uh, she's a partner of the project. And we know that the majority of the communities are black, but we also know in the, in the favela, a lot of people are white. So it's important, uh, and it's being very successful, and self-esteem has to be raised in even in, in the area of fashion. So this is a football group. We have 32 young people, 24,000 that participate on this sport, and we have social associations. We are having blood donations on the 11th, and uh, all the young people, all the parents of the young people who are participating in this sport will have to donate blood for Emo Rio, which is our association. So we're going to have a bit the, bit the record of uh, blood donation in Rio. And uh, the champ and in the championship, there are many young people from various clubs in Rio and the country. And the, these young people will have the opportunity to play in those uh, clubs. We are creating now, first, because if you stop, I'm going to think it's a prejudice. 
the imperialists of the first world uh, putting down the favelas from Brazil. Expo Kufa. Expo Kufa is launching this year in, the, in, in December. In Brazil, we have the Favela Day. We have one million signatures to make this day become law. And we today, the law in some cities, particularly in Rio, it started in Rio, the day of favela, which is on the 4th of the month. It's not because you want to celebrate it, but it's a day of reflection. And we are creating Expo Kufa, which is an exposition, international exposition, expo, exhibition of culture of favela. And, uh, we'll, and that's when it links the day of favela with all the period of the exhibition. The Rede Globo Televisão, dando mídia para nós. When you learn well, when you learn about this, you can undertake a public. Um, you can you can get involved. When well, the, this chap is very difficult to get in touch with. Well, right now I can speak to him face to face. Uh, he's a very difficult person to contact otherwise. Um, but but we had this question about the Olympic Games. Yes, there is this question. Um, even though we might criticize it, we know that the, uh, the World Cup and the Olympic Games, I imagine that the, the effect will be will, will, um, the, 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 the poor people that are, um, uh, will not get will not have access to it. I imagine that a ticket will cost 300 reais, but in, in, apart from uh, telling them off and things like those, we, uh, how can we do make it possible so for the um, Olympic Games to be a part of the favela? Um, we have the Jogos da Favela, the games of the of the favelas, which are games, but are not Olympics, but they are their acti sport activities, um, mu uh, music concerts, and and it's a way we have that so we can have the Olympic spirit also in the favelas. And uh, uh, we, we would like to get some financing from our ministry and also from here, from the uh, magnate from uh, Globe Television. And uh, I, I have come here for business. I came here to do business. Uh, so uh, there is a jungle kufa. And uh, we're, we're moving forward in this. We, we have the FC, which everybody knows. We have the, the Jungle 5, which is uh, uh, Kufa is, 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 has the Jungle 5 with uh, J5, which is a, which is a sports uh, in, for the um, favelas of Rio. And this is only in the, Rio, in the city of Rio, and then it can go to other parts of the country. And then there's the Parallel University. I, I'm going to um, uh, address the three of you here, which is uh, a physical space in the uh, Cidade de Deus, which is uh, 5,000 square meters. And we're going to we're going to build a, a hospital um, for a family hospital for the community, and uh, we're asking our, um, our our mate here to 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 help him to help us build it. We, we would like to have a, uh, it will be a space for uh, knowledge, uh, university, uh, parallel university, and so it's for the benefit of the uh, favela, uh, which they, people have been um, struggling to get their, their children to study. And here, and, and we hope that, we hope that those who have money to, to do what is good, I think we've got two two million uh, hey eyes, and we have uh, somebody from here as well uh, offering uh, another million dollars. Uh, so my invitation here is for the um, this uni parallel university. I'm going to talk about it uh, l uh, later on. What exactly is it? It's a it's a project um, which I think is. Uh, uh, which is the uh, pedagogical or teaching uh, construction. So this is a, an, a, 
It could be the uh, partnership with, with some university in the country, CESPI, for example, with our uh, whatever, whatever, something public. Is that okay? Is that all right? Is that all right, Malif? So that's it. Thank you very much. I support Arsenal, and most of their best games go to extra time, so we can uh, we can cope. Um, the third and final speaker is Antonio Roberto Cesario de Sa, uh, who is Under Secretary of Planning and Operations uh, in the Department of Public Security uh, in the State Government of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, he's a graduate of the Catholic University uh, in Rio in law. Um, he has uh, a long industrial illustrious. Uh, career in the police, joining the military police uh, in 1983, becoming lieutenant colonel, joining the federal police, and subsequently uh, the special operations battalion, the BOPI, uh, which some of you um, I'm sure will have heard of. He's also become head uh, of the police department uh, in Acre, uh, and um, has returned to Rio uh, in uh, recent times. Uh, to become Under Secretary. Uh, so, uh, without further ado, uh, Antonio Roberto. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd just like to thank you very much for the invitation that I've had here. And uh, I'd like to congratulate the uh, LSC and uh, Professor Sandra. And uh, it's a, a unique pleasure to be here with you to, to talk about this uh, theme, which is so relevant to us. And, and uh, uh, I haven't brought you a, a, a solution to the problem, but also a, a story of success. And, to, and I'd like to, be, uh, to tell you a little bit about what's being done in Rio. And, uh, and and uh, we can talk about the reality that we see there, which is a model of a city that, uh, which, which uh, uh, here uh, uh, we have this uh, highest uh, real estate costs. Uh, we can put this alongside the, the reality of Brazil. And it's a moment for reflection. As I mentioned, I have 29 years, 10 months, and a few days in the police uh, force. I've uh, worked in the police force in, in Rio. Uh, I've worked in technical operations in Rio de Janeiro, and uh, as uh, Fei Zhang um, must have been uh, within uh, our uh, crosshairs uh, somewhere along the lines, and uh, I've listened to Celso speaking, even one of the... Um, uh, I'm not here to, to praise anybody for free of course, but I'm telling you what I think about it, but I think the the people who've worked hard with this uh, project who were capable of creating projects that are relevant and not, not just here to make do politics or play politics, but but there's also another um, hard worker, an on, entrepreneur. We have to get over some of the preconceived ideas and the prejudices for us to have changes. Over the years, uh, the police uh, has been used as uh, an organ for pres uh, pressure in these communities and in these uh, deprived areas, which we know we call the favelas. There were places where uh, very easily the uh, drug pushers uh, operated and he, he uh, and created a generation of, uh, of young people after they became adults. And, and so we had generations who uh, just uh, carried arms uh, to, to perpetuate their business. And so we had a violent situation. And so and the police had to be armed uh, to, to defend itself. And, and others had to defend their turfs. And, but uh, uh, abandoning this, uh, this history, and uh, instead of having uh, uh, with a gun in his hand, running behind a Fei Zhang uh, or somebody else like that. So now we've been invited by the federal police to be a part of the the, the, the staff in Rio. And 
and all of these operations, uh, 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 somebody always died. Uh, somebody, either a, dwell, uh, a favela dweller or a, or a drug trafficker or somebody else. Sometimes we arrested or killed or we helped or we, we collected the arms. So in 2007, we got to Rio in this situation. 18 persons dead. They attacked a, a bus. And uh, hostages were, were taken, uh, and the society, w w what was going to happen now? Well, uh, what did we do? We had repressive actions to, to uh, arrest marginal people, to, to get their arms, to impound. This was very difficult, but in a certain way, we had to try and uh, rescue the authority, to recover, take, retake authority, and to show to the population that uh, and, and to restore a good uh, situation for the population that wasn't uh, criminals. We, we need to maintain order. And, and in 2007, 2008, many of the operations and many, uh, many were arrested, many were killed on both sides, and nothing changed. So what was necessary? We needed to have a dose of courage and to develop a project such as this, which is to put policemen and in areas which were known by us as, as dangerous areas, and for them to enter, uh, we know uh, there there was a shootout. They used to kill innocent people and bandits. And, and so we had an idea that we should have a pilot project in Dona Marta, which is a new strategy for, for policing with old concepts which is which is one of uh, proximity and closeness and and we could just have a police unit which was a p pacifying un uh, unit police force which was to make use of their best resources in an area that needed uh, some attention we needed young police officers and a reasonable number of people and uh, there are 24 hours um, and another strategy which uh, which was to uh, face up to the parallel effects or the negative areas, negative aspects of this area, which is the uh, a, a, a strategy to change the, the, the way that the criminals operated and to, so that they can try and abandon their arms. And we needed to find a solution to this as well. So why did we have the peacekeeping or the pacifying units? To place in the areas where the, that has been abandoned for decades. And so we had these um, uh, pockets of, uh, of poverty and uh, d d inequality. And we, we needed to have a permanent presence there, but not in the old way which is a, a shootout or to rescue somebody and then go and then leave. These communities, when, when we talk about uh, prejudices, we, 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 we as uh, police officers had um, prejudices and preconceived ideas about them, but because we didn't know them in the same way that they have uh, prejudices about the police, uh, and the police with regards to the academy, and everybody in their corner fighting their, fighting their corners, and we, and, and then we had the public policies that were not uh, quite right. So we needed a, an incentive to, uh, and this created an incentive to, to kill um, criminals. And this was promote somebody, a, the police officer that killed the criminal received the promotion. So this created uh, in, in the police uh, uh, a lot of officers who did not take prisoners. They, they killed the they, they killed the bandit, and this gives st status to the officer. And so this uh, created a cycle of violence. So we ne what, what needed to be done? We needed to put the police in a way, in a permanent way, but to preserve the rights of the community. And once again, we're talking, uh, we say in a very sincere way, I don't want to make making a politically correct speech, but, but we, we didn't understand them. We needed to understand them as individuals because they are people with rights and, and they need to um, respond to their responsibilities, uh, their civil responsibilities, and to, and to develop a strategy uh, on the part of the police, as I mentioned previously. 
uh, which is to, uh, closer ties with the community so that people can get to know the police officer and the police can also know the people in the community which was the contrary to what uh, happened uh, in previous episodes uh, so that uh, they didn't have uh, they didn't tell their names so as not to be avoid uh, to be identified so then they couldn't accuse anybody this happened for a long time but in in short this strategy uh, of the P p pacifying police, uh, the, the, there was a, the idea was to recover peace or to restore peace. With regards to territory or turf, this was important. The, the, the police needed to be ahead of the of the of the hillside, which was where the the favelas were. But there is also, but but the the, the the king of the hill, so to speak, was the, uh, the 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 breadwinner of the family, the people in the community. We don't want for the um, police officer to be king of the hill. They, they needed to respect the order, and so we had a, a very huge dichotomy here, which created the evolution. We, we wanted the pro progress, but we also had difficulty with order. Uh, and so we needed to build this up uh, uh, at little, little by little with the presence of police officers and with the presence of all the and participation of all the secretariats and the ministries, uh, all of them doing their part. And in effect, the, the discourse was that we couldn't put a crash there, we couldn't put a school there or we do san uh, sanitation because there was no secure uh, uh, environment there. So we needed to open up this curtain, open this door so as to allow this uh, uh, security so that all of these people here could have the opportunity to these services uh, also uh, also for um, political campaigns so uh, anybody who wanted to do this didn't have to get permission from uh, a king of the hill but they the, the, the favelas really didn't need the presence of um, police officers, but they needed sanitation, they needed uh, urban order, they needed social services, but it was not possible to tolerate uh, uh, territories in Rio in which people to cross or to enter, they had to get the permission of somebody with a, with a rifle. Uh, who, who asked you where you were going or where you weren't going, and very often this was the case this, this was a, basically a, a traffic tribunal. And, and the result was that the, this market for drugs uh, generated uh, uh, enormous violence in, in the city of Rio. Initially, we did a project up until two, uh, which is up until 2014. It is, uh, it has already gone beyond its, um, uh, its targets. We have 40 um, peace, uh, peacekeeping units or pacifying units, and by we, we want to have, we're going to uh, achieve a total of 165. We have 118 at the moment, and we employ 12, over 12,000 police officers. We already have seven already um, deployed in this strategy. So initially, it was only in the only in the Rio, but we also have in the Grand Greater Metropolitan Area and also in the Baixada Fluminense and the regions of Rio that are outside of the city limits of Rio. And we want to finish up with this um, the domination for trafficking. There are a number of factors that uh, play a role. There is uh, a balancing of budget. Uh, there. Uh, we need to have long-term planning. We, we have uh, low uh, population growth and poor uh, public management. All of these things uh, in uh, Rio at the moment uh, is undergoing uh, an integration in both in federal, state, and city. Um, but now the, the governor of the Rio it was always the opposition, so the, the state of Rio uh, never had this level of uh, the, the three levels of government to do what was good for the society. And today, this is a reality. And uh, just my opinion, which I'd like to pass on to you, that the people who live in these areas uh, uh, would like to have um, this level. There are some uh, res re results which 
uh, that we didn't imagine that we would achieve. So there was a report that was talking about the uh, ransoming or the redemption of the, 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 the poor, a- poor areas and, and the increase in sales of the s- stores and, uh, and the prices of um, real estate. Uh, in two years, we have a reduction of 46% of um, shootings and uh, e- emergency cases in Rio. When we, when we did this uh, project, we did not imagine that we would achieve this sort of thing within such a short period of time and reduce emergencies in hospitals um, uh, and, uh, and reduce uh, accidents with uh, automobiles or even uh, domestic violence. Uh, the, 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 the hospitals were there basically to, to see to people who were shot rather than people who suffered from other things uh, or who were hit by stray bullets. This is, uh, in, in fact, what has been achieved is an credible, incredible situation today. So we, we, we have an increased number of students in, in schools, in, this, in, the, in the favelas. We have a number of uh, uh, reports and uh, interviews with mothers uh, who uh, needed security to allow their children to be able to go to school. And then there were, because of these PPs, um, there's a uh, an inequality rate falls in Rio, and the um, real estate uh, um, pr- prices increased because and those favelas that have this uh, pacification progress uh, are benefiting in this way. And the acts of resistance fall in the first half of the year. This is something uh, I, I spoke to. I'm going to show you later on how this uh, high in this incidence of uh, which uh, in which criminals were killed with this uh, the the, the uh, uh, police in Rio de Janeiro were among the v- most violent in Brazil. But now we're managing to change this. They didn't take prisoners; they shot. And this concept, which up until t- today, uh, which has been uh, like a goal for most of these police officers, so now we there is a goal to reduce uh, mortality. So the uh, the police police officers are only going to exceed their limits if they uh, if they arrest more. This means that if they and in the everyday work of the police officers, we understand that uh, anybody who commits a crime has to be arrested and taken to court, and not uh, suffer um, justice uh, at the hands of the police. The, the discourse some years ago, uh, a good a good bandit was a, was a dead one. No, I, I came here to say t- the truth, because today Rio went through some very difficult times, and the police officer was an instrumental in this. He didn't do this deliberately. He was a good uh, police officer for his boss, he, but he he killed the bandits. It, it's shocking to say this, but it's a reality. Now today we we see light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, the the uh, the top of the police forces. We we have a the a discourse for the preservation of life and of liber- uh, and of the rights and legitimacy. Um, we have participation up seventy hospital beds a month for new patients in Getulia Vargas. Unit. Almost every day, we had uh, we had uh, tens of um, people sh- of shootings by uh, uh, different uh, traffic drug trafficking factions. And here is another praise for the new success uh, in Rio de Janeiro for combating or fighting drugs. And as I said, we also had another strategy. It's no point us looking at, uh, to the asphalt or to do only to the favelas, but we have to look at everybody who lives, works, or passes through Rio. As a means of complementing this uh, strategy, we also uh, we also had a compatibilization of uh, spaces. I'm going to go very quickly on this. Uh, but from 2009, we could... We can show this uh, chart. We had uh, 49, almost 59 percent, 
40, 50 uh, intentional homicides. Today, we are down to 30.8, which means from 2009, when the strategy of pacification started and the implementation of this, the, the drop has been 31%. So, so uh, intentional homicides from 2000, from 41 per 1,000, it's down now to 26.5. This is uh, two. It was very close to 20 percent. So the this is a shootouts or battles with uh, the police. Uh, this has also had a significant reduction. It's still not suf not sufficient. I'm not uh, I'm not saying any of these numbers to commemorate. I'm just uh, simply showing that there's a tendency towards declination decline. Um, and so we we're on the correct path. And this tendency shows that we're on the right path and we're going the right way. Uh, uh, auto theft. This is uh, usually involved a lot of violence. This has also had a uh, significant drop, as well as uh, muggings. Uh, officers killed in service, uh, which is the case where uh, these people that killed other bandits and other innocents also killed the uh, police officers. There was a case of a woman who uh, who was killed, was um, who died, who was shot. Uh, a, a police woman that was shot, and we 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 regret the death of everybody. But that was very emblematic of the. It 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 caused us a. a uh, cause us to think, is this uh, pacification process working? Um, she chose a, she had a, a 7.2 caliber, and this was used. Uh, so we can't tolerate this anymore. The d drug trafficking, we have to uh, combat it. Uh, and the police officer works. Um, so there's a, uh, the, the, in the matter of legalization of drug, that's a different debate, but I can say that. Uh, as a police officer, I have to obey the law, and that is a crime. With regards to arms, uh, guns uh, used by uh, drug traffickers, this is what causes uh, violence, because you have um, uh, drug trafficking here in London, in Paris, in Copacabana, in Ipanema, in Leblon, in Lagoa. Uh, aren't they going to have it in a favela? Why not? So what utopia is this? Uh, we're going to have to put uh, police there to finish up with the um, trafficking of drugs. No. Um, but what is not pos possible to tolerate is the dictatorship of the gun, neither by the, on the part of the police or the, or the criminal. So here, even in London, there is other places. In London, we know that the police um, uh, don't carry guns. Uh, for him to use guns here, he has to get a specialist training. Uh, in other, in in Rio, uh, every country has got their own co uh, culture, and so we have to find the, the the path for people to live in dignity and to preserve the life of everyone. Uh, well, time is running out, and I just want to thank you very much for your attention and say that I had no pretense to tell you to do a, a, a discourse and to give you. A whitewash. Uh, I am from the government and from the uh, public security, but I came here with humility to tell you that we have a, a huge um, um, challenge. Uh, I, I have I've buried police officers. I've been in a situation. I've uh, had colleagues have been killed, but I I say with experience to the youngest, there uh, there were uh, wrong public policies. Now we are at the beginning of a new path that I hope that will work well. But uh, here this people who represent the um, deprived communities. We just, n and there, there is a certain skepticism to think that by co putting police officers in these places, we're going to resolve the problems, and we haven't resolved it. But public security is, is the door to citizenship, and, uh, if, and the most we can rescue here is uh, hope. We have news that in, in throughout Rio, we have places uh, where uh, there, there are people who, who, who pray for the, these officers that do pass, uh, pacification, which means that people are beginning to see that it's a solution and a possibility for them to live 
even with in poverty, but to live in with dignity, with respect, and with respect for life, especially so that people can study, they can go to work and come back home. And there's nothing more gratifying than really to 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 look at the physi physiognomy of a mother and a father in the in this place and see that they. Uh, breathe a sigh of relief that my son or my daughter, my grandchild, can now go to school without uh, uh, being hit by a stray bullet. In this picture, this was the fair first picture of Donna Marta in Bajonobrik, which is uh, Botafogo. And there, uh, some, uh, the people always died there, but these children, which are here uh, almost three years, they, they, these are children who have not heard a single gunshot. And we can be sure, if if they heard a sound, it was a it was a firecracker. But these are be, be before that there was executions. People they saw dead bodies in the in the street. But but now we we would we leave a path for those who take our place to give uh, f to a follow up to this. So our expectation and our uh, hope is that it will be this will be said and publicized by Kufa, by by Afrohege, by the academies, by by our representatives here in, in London, Brazilians here who do a, a, an excellent work here, uh, that it's a marvelous city, but it's not a, a discourse uh, to live, to work, to visit, and to spend your life. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention. Uh, thank you, Antonio, for the uh, insightful uh, presentation. Um, we're running a little bit over time. Um, uh, another British imperial invention is the combination of tea and timekeeping. It's very important. As I'm sure you realize, tea, sugar, china, and lemon are indigenous to these isles. Um, the, uh, the report that Sandra wrote um, uses an interesting metaphor, which is this idea of pathways, uh, and pathways of sort of sociability, both within and particularly from the favela and to the rest of the city. Um, and I think what we've kind of picked across in, in different ways um, are these competing pathways um, of connection, and to some extent starting off through sort of narratives of disconnection um, in all of the presentations. Um, but some sort of sterling efforts on the behalf of federal government, state government, and by civil society, if I can kind of put that um, ring around Kufa and Afrohege and, and people in general, um, to sort of draw um, society and the city together with and through the state. Um, I very much like a phrase that was used um, at the Rio version of this meeting, uh, I think by Celso, which uh, described um, their actions as, so, as cultural agitation. Um, and I think that's a very useful way to sort of open up and path break um, from the favela and within the favela uh, to get the attention of government. And clearly also what I've learned today is uh, to also get the attention uh, of the business community uh, as well, uh, which is an important player uh, and often um, uh, forgotten about. Um, so I think we've kind of run out of time, I'm afraid, for, uh, for questions and answers in sort of public forum. Uh, but if we call it, close uh, the session here, uh, and by all means uh, capture uh, one of the three speakers um, during tea break and uh, direct your questions to them uh, on that, uh, through that means. Okay, thank you very much.